one who grieves not in misery and delights not in pleasure, who is free from attachments and fear, for whom gold and dust remains the same, who has renounced both praising and blaming, and is immune to greed, worldly attachments and pride. When the all-merciful Guru blesses his disciple with his grace, only then the disciple attains this spiritual state and blends with the Lord as water with water. A very warm good evening to ladies and gentlemen. Today I, Priyanka Dadwal, student of Lalpur Khalsa College of Education for Women, stand before you to present my views on the topic, the life journey and teaching of Guru Tegh Bahadurji. Guru Tegh Bahadurji, revered by the people as the protector of humanity, was the ninth Guru in Sikhism. Born as Tyagman to Guru Hargobind Rai and Mata Nanki in 1621, Guruji spent his early childhood in Amritsar. He learned various skills such as horsemanship and archery. He learned various classical Hindu literatures such as the Vedas, the Upanishads and the Puranas. After the battle of Kartarpur, he was named as Tegh Bahadur. Following the battle, a major change took over the young Tegh Bahadur. He turned to the path of renunciation and meditation. He spent his next 20 years in an underground room absorbed in meditation in Bakala. When the eighth Guru, Guru Har Krishnan Ji, fell ill, he indicated his followers that the next Guru would be in Bakala. There is a very interesting story related with the finding of the ninth Guru. A rich Sikh merchant, Makhan Shah, prayed to the Lord that he would give 500 gold coins if his ship that was caught in a violent storm reached the port safely. When he reached Bakala, he saw that many people claimed to be the Guru. He decided to give two gold coins to every Guru. But when he reached Guru Tegh Bahadurji, Guruji said that he didn't fulfill his promise of giving 500 gold coins. Makhan Shah became very happy and he told the world that the true Guru has been found. After being seated on Guru Gaddi, Guru Tegh Bahadurji embarked on various journeys propagating the messages, the teachings of Guru Nanak Dev Ji. According to him, one cannot be purified simply by washing one's body, since the polluted mind cannot be washed with water. It is only the true name of the Almighty can that can wash away the sins and emancipate the soul. His spiritual writings include 116 Shabads and 15 Ragas. He started community kitchen and community water wells. When Guruji was in Anandpur, at that time, the Mughal emperor, Aurangzeb, wanted to consolidate India into an Islamic state. To achieve his aim, he tried to virtually eliminate Hinduism. When the panic-stricken people reached to Guruji for help, he told them it would take the sacrifice of a holy man to intercede. During that time, the young Gobind Rai told his father that no one is better than him to defend those people. So Guruji decided to stand for the right of freedom of worship. His sacrifice gave a strong message of religious freedom and is therefore known as Hindi Chadar. His spiritual writings contains various themes such as nature of God, worldly attachments, desire, soul and sorrows. He guided his disciples towards the path of peace. He showed them the path of divinity by teaching them to overcome ego, desire, pain, and so on. He taught people to protect those who need protection, even if it comes at the cost of one's own sacrifice. He revealed people the true reason behind human suffering. And he also taught people that God is present everywhere. One only has to look within himself to connect with him. In the end, I want to conclude with the words of Guru Gobind Singh Ji. To protect their rights to wear their sacred threads and caste marks, did he in the dark age perform supreme sacrifice. To help the saintly, he went to the utmost limit. He lost his head but never cried in pain. He suffered for the sake of his faith. He gave his head but revealed not his secret. He disdained to perform miracles or juggler's tricks. To fill the men of God with shame. He burst the bonds of mortal clay and went to the abode of heaven. No one hath ever performed an act as noble as his. Thank you.